Uh, kia ora tato. My name is Russell Bishop. I'm an Emeritus Professor from the University of Waikato in Hamilton, New Zealand. My topic is educating culturally responsive teachers to address the learning needs of Indigenous and other minoritised students. Uh, I first began becoming concerned about this whole issue of educational achievement for Māori students um, as my mother's family of Māori and I was really concerned, I've been concerned all my life really, as to why Māori children and members of my own family have not been achieving at the same level as school as non-Māori people in our society. And why all these effects are felt throughout the rest of the society where Māori people are overrepresented in the negative statistics in society and underrepresented in the benefits that our society has to offer. So I commenced my academic journey with uh, looking at how to undertake educational research in Māori settings. And I found that it was really important to actually work in, main, in, in, in mainstream settings. It was very important to work in a setting in a way that Māori people could understand and could make sense of. And one of the most obvious ways of doing so was to work in an extended family structure. Uh, the research that I was doing myself was with my own family, my mother's family, and but I talked with other people as well, and they also told me that they worked in Māori settings in ways understandable to Māori. I then extrapolated that to the education of Māori's children in classrooms and schools in New Zealand, and I established a, a large research project, um, essentially developing a model and over the period of time, I've managed to develop a model of effective practice for culturally responsive and relationship-based teachers that I'm going to detail now. The model is essentially um, operating, drawing from my experiences working with Indigenous people, but I have enough evidence and uh, experience to realise that this is also applicable to those other people in society, the increasingly diverse populations in our society who are being marginalised and minoritised by the, the overall dominant discourse in our society. So anyway, the model that I'm suggesting is a relationship-based pedagogic model and also leadership model. And it consists of three actions that effective teachers and leaders and coaches and system leaders as well can, when they implement this model in their classroom, I've actually, there is, there is empirical research that I've managed to do, undertake in our country, that demonstrates that implementing this model at a variety of levels increases the educational achievement of minoritised students and Indigenous students as well. The first part of the model is establishing a context in the classroom. The effective teachers and effective leaders establish a family, an extended family-like context within their classrooms. There are five dimensions to this first part of the model. The first dimension of the first part, that is establishing a family-like context in the classroom, is teachers refusing to draw from the deficit discourse in our society that says things like indigenous students, minoritized students, don't care about their education and their parents don't care about education and they come to school with a chip on their shoulder or they come to school for their lunch they don't come here they are not motivated when teachers say this they find it very difficult to actually establish meaningful learning relationships with young people what we're trying to promote through this model is teachers drawing from relationship-based discourses that actually identify the positivity that children can bring to the classroom, the cultural knowledges that they can bring, and creating learning contexts where these young, young people can bring their learning to the classroom, where their experiences and identity is actually meaningful and official in the classroom. The second dimension is that effective teachers demonstrate that they care for the young people, and not just caring in a holding hands and being nice sense. They're caring for the learning. They're caring that the young people actually will succeed in society through their educational opportunities, through them being able to take advantage of their educational opportunities. 
Third dimension is a subset of caring in a way, which is to have high expectations of these young students. Too often we see young people uh, being given low level work or given having, uh, teachers having low expectations of these young people. The fourth dimension is teachers being able to establish a well managed learning environment, knowing what to do. And the fifth point is teachers knowing what to teach, knowing what children need to learn so they can live in a modern world and also promote their own language and culture. The second part of the model is where effective teachers of Indigenous and other minoritised students interact with these young people within this learning context in ways where they use power sharing strategies such as cooperative learning for example, where they provide feedback on the learning that young people are engaging in, where they provide feed forward, that is they give them indications of where they can take their learning to, and where they co-construct their understandings and learning about and, and creating new knowledge with young people, drawing all the time from their own cultural understandings and bringing their own cultural understandings and experiences into the relationship, into the conversation that is learning. The third part of the model is actually about monitoring. Effective teachers and leaders of Indigenous and other minoritised students monitor the progress that young people are, are, are making and assist them to see how they can use this evidence of, mo of their achievement and their progress to, de to identify where they're taking their learning towards. There are seven dimensions to this particular part. The first one is supporting learners to set goals. Goal setting is incredibly important because it means that you can identify the, those uh, aspects and those um, activities that are central to reaching the goal and leaving all the peripheral distractions to the side. The second dimension is where young people are supported to understand, to identify the way they prefer to learn. The third is how they prefer to be organised. The fourth is are they able to engage in leadership activities. The fifth one is are they able to spread and include other people in their learning. The sixth one dimension is about using evidence to inform their learning and where they might go to. And the seventh part, uh, dimension, is about taking ownership. Are learners able to take ownership of their learning, of all those other dimensions, and take over control and determination over their learning? This model is not a lockstep model where you establish a, 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 or create a, a family-like context and then interact within the context and then monitor. It's actually more of a complex, interactive, a comprehensive model where effective teachers do, where they weave together the, these various dimensions and where they draw from the model to implement and, and respond to the learning needs of young people in real time as needs be in a responsive, in a culturally responsive manner. From this we find, from implementing such a model as this, we have found that young Indigenous people and other minoritised students are making dramatic improvements in their participation in education and their achievement. Kia ora mō Manaki Nice to talk to you, thank you.